in New York City and suburban New Jersey and across the nation. You know why they're doing it? Because the other groups have absentee parents who don't care, so they're eliminating, for example, homework. Asians do their homework and the others don't, so they're eliminating the homework. Instead of leaving behind the morons and the slackers, they're punishing the Asian Americans. For example, in New York City, Asian Americans make up 13% of students, yet they win more than 50% of the coveted places each year at the city's selective public high schools such as Bronx Science and Stuyvesant. And so the other, shall I say, groups, I won't even use the word races, we'll say the other groups, that's a less incendiary word, the other groups now want the Asians not to be admitted to these schools. They want, uh, let's, let's say, idiots and morons led into uh, Stuyvesant, Bronx Science and Stuyvesant. Even when I was a kid, the smarter kids went to Bronx High School of Science and Stuyvesant. I didn't get in. I wasn't a good student. I wouldn't have gone anyway, but nevertheless, it was a, a prestigious thing to go there. And so um, it was meant for the smartest kids in those fields. And it's being done strictly to disenable Asian American students. Since they're outperforming all the others, they want to now cripple them. Could you believe this? How bad this has become? Many non-Asian parents are up in arms, complaining there's too much pressure by Asians and their own kids can't compete. In response, school superintendent David Adderhold apologized that school had become a perpetual achievement machine. And so Superintendent Moron Adderhold canceled all the accelerated and enriched math courses for fourth and fifth grades, which were 90% Asian. And he eliminated midterms and finals in high school. Wait, you ready for this? And he used a word that strikes terror in the hearts of Asian parents. He said schools had to take a holistic approach. That's a euphemism that Harvard uses to limit the number of Asians accepted to favor non-Asians who are not as smart. Superintendent Adderhold even lowered standards for playing in school music programs. He said students have a right to squeak. Never mind whether they practice. Even if they can't play well, he puts them in the, into the uh, orchestra. Can you believe what's going on? Now, the article says, of course, neither the supervisor or superintendent nor parents in charge of sports are indulging non-athletic kids with a right to fumble. What would be a right to fumble? It would be like me putting me on a football team when I was a kid. And I, if I dropped the ball, I said, all right, I, he, he can't play. Oh, but he has a right to fumble. Put Savage on the football team. Put him on, because he, he can't make it on his own. So give him a right to fumble. In New York City, Mayor Bill D. Stupidio and the NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement Only of Colored People, wants to reduce the role the competitive exam plays in admissions for the city's eight selective high schools in favor of a holistic approach. Well, that means robbing poor, largely immigrant, and first-generation kids of the chance to study hard and compete for a world-class education. Now, you understand what this is about, don't you? You understand why America is descending into the toilet. They had this at Queens College where I went. When I went to Queens College as a kid, it was a very tough school. And the, the curriculum... The curriculum was based on the 100 great books at the University of Chicago, which we had to read. It was a very tough school, and only the smartest could get through that school with A's. Then after I left, years later, they had open admissions. They took the city's dregs and put them in there. The school went into the toilet bowl. Then years later, they realized they couldn't do this anymore. They had like basically a gangs running around the school who couldn't, didn't want to study nothing. They turned it into a cesspool. So they reintroduced standards, and they brought the school back. Now we're going back to the cesspool level. Now let any moron into a college. Give him a book, and a, that's all. He's a college student already. 855-407. It's depressing, I admit. There's Fox News is showing the worst man in the history of America, Larry David, and they're laughing like he's something funny. You see, see the difference between me and Fox News? I'm looking at it. This is what they're glorifying now on Fox News is one of the worst anti-Americans in the history of the media. Larry David, who created nothing... Oh, don't get me started on him. He is the antithesis of me. 
He's everything I left behind when I fled New York 40, 50 years ago. It was men like him that made me leave. I didn't want to be around them. I hated them. They were the worst people I knew. And look what they've done to the world. Oh, he's worth a billion dollars. Therefore, he's great. Great man. He created Jerry Seinfeld, but another great man who uh, works as a, a beard for Obama now. Anyway, what's the difference of complaining? You, you think I'm just complaining? You're wrong. Am I actually helping things by pointing these things out? That's what i got to ask you. Bill Cosby's accusers celebrate his sex assault charge. You know, I didn't bring this up. I, how many of them are fakers? How many of them really were assaulted by him? Do we know? How could you know what he did 15 years ago? How could this guy have had sex with all these women? Bill Cosby to face criminal charges in Pennsylvania for 04 sexual assault. What evidence could exist 11 years later? Can anyone explain that to me? She dated the guy. She went out with the guy. And then he sa she says he did this, he did that to her. Former Playboy bunny P.J. Maston told the news Cosby lured her to a Chicago hotel room back in 1979. She too came out of the woodwork? How could they come out of the woodwork in 19, from 1979? How could they have any evidence from 1979? How is that possible? I mean, you could, you know, I could say this is an assault upon an innocent black man. I didn't say that, did I? I could say it's an assault upon a man who may have done these things to a few women. There's no, it's impossible for him to have done it to all these women. Especially when his lawyer is Gloria Alred. I'll be back. what I did during the break would have been better than the whole show. The guys couldn't believe it. They wish they could have recorded it. During the break, I spent five minutes calling a deli. I ordered a Greek salad for $15. You know what they sent me? I swear to God, a plastic container full of chopped lettuce and croutons. There was not a tomato in it, a piece of feta cheese, nothing. I had to call a deli, wait for the manager. It was right out of a Seinfeld show. It was unbelievable to me. Oh, we're awfully sorry, sir. We don't know how it happened. We'll send you a Greek salad. So it'll arrive after the show. Perfect. Well, at least you won't have to put up with me gagging on food or <laughs> during the, a live performance. Mm -mm. You know what comes down to it? Truth is simple. It's as simple as that. Truth is quite simple. It's not that complicated. Eight, five... I don't know. This Bill Cosby thing bothers me a lot. I'm not saying that I know. You know, how could there be so many accusers from 1979? Here's one that lured, said lured her to his room in 1979 and served her a glass of Grand Marnier. She's now like on a walker with a transfusion tree. She's remembering him. She probably rem I'm sorry, I won't go there. She still remembers that incident with, with uh, Bill Cosby? The next thing I knew, it was four in the morning, and I woke up naked with this disgusting man next to me. So she waited until 2015 to get even with Bill Cosby? I don't know. How do you know? How could you prove this? How can you prove or not prove this? Look, if a guy molests a woman against her will, obviously, he should go to jail. Let's be clear. There's nothing more disgusting than rape, in my opinion. I'm on record with that. I'm not, I'm not justifying. Don't get me wrong. But... All these women, all of a sudden, you're telling me there's no payday in it for them with that kind of lawyer? A lawyer like this should be, should be sent to ISIS. She ought to be the lawyer for ISIS, Gloria Alred, in my opinion, estimation. In my opinion, estimation. Anyway, let's not call on the Bill Cosby thing. I don't think you want to anyway. You're not going to call about that. I know what you want to talk about. You know, we've got to lighten it up a bit here. Shelly on KSFO Line 4, you're on the Savage Nation. Hi, Michael from Cincinnati, Ohio. I wanted to tell you, um, I love all your shows, but I really enjoy your sarcasm. And you did one on Christmas and political correctness about a week ago, and I really enjoyed that one. I don't remember. I was in a, probably in a good mood. You know, you have to be very sharp to do good sarcasm. Right now, my head is hurting me. I have a slight migraine from the bad Chinese food, but... I can't be that sarcastic right now because my mind is not as sharp as it should be. Well, you are the master of sarcasm. and uh, what, what station do you listen to me on? Oh, you're listening on KSFO Online, right? 
Yeah, so I used to listen on 55 KRC, but you're not on there now, so I listen online. Yeah, yeah, I know that happens. I'll be down to one station and Internet streaming soon. Well, I've been listening to you for about 20 years now, and this is the first time I've called in. But on that Christmas show, you um, you were really at your top on the sarcasm, and you said that holiday, we all know holiday is a, a code word for white Christian racist. I thought that was pretty good. That was pretty oh, funny. when I got into the sarcasm about the white thing, the white privilege, white clouds, white Christmas, snow should be changed to multicultural snow, that, that show. Yeah, I, I stretched it on that one. All right, my friend, copy of Government Zero for Christmas. Oh, for New Year's goes out to you. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. New York City to Harvard, the war on Asian success, not one call. So I don't have one Asian listener. Throw that in the garbage. Live and learn, that's all. FBI offers $5,000 reward after Bacon founded Vegas Mosque. You hear this? This is your FBI at work. Ooh, Bacon. Bacon, get the bacon. Get the bacon dropper. Don't get the guy about to set off a bomb. You know, run, run for the guy who dropped the bacon, the moron, the racist moron. Spend your resources on the bacon dropper. Upside down world. Upside down world. All right, eight five five four seven two eight two is the phone number. Let's see which stories have I not got? Oh, wait a minute, you're in for a treat now. Here is Hillary Clinton, of what she's going to do if God forbid they steal the election and give it to her. Let's say with all the resources of Soros. The Arkansas machine, the Democrat, socialist, Islamist money. God forbid she becomes president. We'll look back upon the wonderful days of Obama. I'm not making up the sound you're about to hear on clip 14. Listen. If we treat this with the same seriousness that it deserves, um, you know, if we put the money into Alzheimer's that we otherwise would put into some additional military asset just think of the lives it would save and the potential that it would perhaps create listen moronic hillary you're so stupid it's frightening cut the military to put into alzheimer's research think of the lives that will be lost if you do that you moron not the lives that will be saved think of the lives that will be lost idiot if you cut the military Wait, it gets even better to listen to this psycho liar as she panders now to the aged, pledging that as president she'll make hearing aids cheaper. I swear to God. You couldn't make this stuff up. You can't create it. Listen to 15 about hearing aids. Sing that new song. I think a lot of people thought we would figure out a way to solve in the Affordable Care Act, but we haven't yet. And it's something that I take really seriously because if you can't hear well, very often people kind of withdraw and they become more isolated and in fact some of the recent research shows that you know that can be a trigger for other kinds of conditions and diseases All right. All right. so now hearing is now the biggest problem on the planet not not right not not isis is racism not not flooding america with cheap workers to drive american wages down it's hearing aids now in clip 16 this is our cure for the world is cheap hearing aids listen to this now it's a growing concern in part because we have a lot more people living longer in part because we have a lot more people losing their hearing earlier some people say it's because of loud music that some of us remember listening to um, but for whatever reason it might be there there are a lot of issues around it so I'm going to do what I can to make sure we make hearing aids financially available on a sliding scale so more people who need them can actually get them why would anyone vote for this woman she shows a lack of judgment in this in this statement alone it shows she's not fit for office is that what you're used to in an age of terror you're wearing out a hearing aid for a person whose hearing is going it's beyond belief people are dumber than i think no i'm not mocking the deaf please my mother had a hearing aid 
I had to buy it for her. Stop telling me that, that I'm not sensitive to people with hearing loss. That's not the point. 